everyone, it's Emma, and today I'm doing a haul. I'm in a different place at the moment. I thought I would sit on the floor for this haul. I had everything that I had gotten recently piled on the floor anyways, so I just thought I would sit next to it and talk to you guys. This past weekend I was in New York City and I did a lot of bookish shopping. I bought books, but I also got things like journals, stickers, and pens, and I'm gonna haul all of it for you guys. I also got some like beauty products and clothing, and I'm not going to haul that, but if you're interested in seeing that, let me know, because I am considering it. I also got my hair dyed. It's not just the lighting, I am a redhead. <laughs> I got it done in New York City at this organic salon, and I vlogged all of it, so that will be up soon, unless it's already up at this moment. So I'm going to start this haul, this book, stationery, journal, stickers. I'm just going to call it a New York City haul because that's what happened. The first books that I got, I didn't technically buy in New York City, but they came in the mail right as we were leaving, so I actually brought them to New York City with me. The 20th Anniversary Harry Potter editions of the Philosopher's Stone Slytherin edition. So they released these Hogwarts House versions of the first book. I got both the US version and the UK version. I think I actually like the UK version better, but I love the US version because of the pages on the side. These ones are green, but this one looks like this Slytherin scarf. So this is just the first book in the Harry Potter series, but it also has all this extra stuff on the inside. There's kind of like basic Hogwarts house info in here about Slytherin and like what Slytherins are all about and the house founder and the house relics, house ghost, etc., etc. There's also a beautiful map which I didn't know before I bought it. So when it came in the mail, I was just like geeking out. And then there's a little bit more in the back, like famous alumni and about the house common room, some beautiful illustrations. So I'm really, really happy that I picked these up. I've been really in a Slytherin mood, like in a Harry Potter mood ever since we went to Harry Potter world. So these like satisfied that a little bit. Now I'm gonna talk about the books I got at Book Culture. Book Culture is one of my all-time favorite independent bookstores. I think there's actually a couple locations in New York City, but I go to the one that's Book Culture on Columbus, so it's on the west side. I think I've vlogged there before. I think maybe it was my Hamilton vlog or just my New York City vlog. I can't remember. I'll link it down below. It's just a great, great bookstore. So I bought a couple things there. The first thing is called Poetry Will Save Your Life, a memoir by Jill Bielowski. This is a memoir, obviously. It's kind of like the poems that meant something to this person at different points in her life, like telling her life story through the poems that were meaningful to her at this time and like writing about them. I just know it's going to be so inspiring. I'm similar with poems and with music, like at certain times in my life, certain songs or certain poems mean a lot to me. So I'm really excited to get into this one. I had also never heard of it and I just picked it up on like the new releases table. Then I bought This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills. I've been drawn to this book for so long because the cover is just beautiful. But I never heard anyone talking about it, so I was kind of hesitant to just go ahead and buy it. But recently, Jesse the Reader read this and he really enjoyed it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a try. It's about this girl, Sloane, and she moves from New York City to Florida and her falling into this friend group and I think kind of finding her way, adjusting to moving and all of that. The last thing I got at Book Culture I'm super excited about because I haven't opened it yet. It's one of those blind book date things. It says like read me if you liked and then a couple books like it. I put this on my story on Instagram. I got like so many messages of people being like what was the book? What was the book? Because the ones that it recommends if you liked it. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. <laughs> Based on that, whatever is inside of this is going to be my favorite book ever. I waited to open it because I wanted to open it on camera with you guys because I kind of wanted to show you how cute it is. I'm going to open it now. You guys better appreciate the amount of patience it took for me to not open this book for like three days. Oh, interesting. It's a Great and Terrible Beauty by Libra Bray. 
I actually think that I own a copy of this book somewhere. I was not expecting it to be a book that I recognized, so I guess I'll have to give this one a try. I've heard really good things actually from people who have read it. Like I've heard that it's a favorite of a lot of people. I just never read it. So, hmm, interesting. Cool. The next book I bought at Rand McNally Bookstore, which is another one of my favorite bookstores, it's a super cool one, especially for not YA stuff. Like if you're looking for like poetry or essays, they separate everything by like, like Chinese, Japanese, Korean lit was one section, British lit was a section, French lit, and they separate it like that, which makes it really interesting to look through. What I actually bought is what I intended to go in there to buy, which is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien Too by Jomini Sen. <laughs> I don't actually know how you're supposed to pronounce this title. It might be everyone's an alien when you're an alien too. This is a graphic novel. It's about a little alien. <laughs> I haven't read this yet, but it looks like the cutest thing in the world. I've just flipped through it and it just looks so cute. I'm really excited. This is going to be my next read, I think. This is the last book before I move on to manga. And it is, I wrote this for you by Ian, I think his first name is said Ian, Ian S. Thomas. But this is, I wrote this for you, just the words. So when this was originally published, there were like a lot of photographs with it. It is a poetry book, but it was one of those poetry books that was like, words and photographs go together. And for some reason, I wasn't drawn to the pictures and like the photography style. So I was really excited to see that they had published just the words. I think this is new because I had never seen it before. I'm excited to read these poems now that there aren't pictures. I'm sure the pictures were wonderful. It just wasn't my style. So. Manga, 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 manga. I'm not excited about manga. What? I got Death Note Volume 3. I've been loving this series. It's kind of reflective because Kinokuniya sells it still in the plastic and I don't like to open it until I read it because it's just fun and satisfying to keep it in the plastic. I love the covers for this series. I don't know why I never noticed that before I started reading them but they're really cool covers. We'll probably be moving on to this one fairly soon. And I got Tokyo Ghoul Volume 8 which I read half of Volume 7 while I was in New York and I had to stop because it was really violent. I've been told it was a horror manga and that it was really disturbing. And then while I was reading it, I was like, this isn't so bad. And then I got to volume seven. So I'm not sure when I'll be moving on to volume eight. I would actually really appreciate your guys' insight. Those of you who have like read the whole series, if it kind of continues down that path and is like super violent the whole time, or if it's just like there's a scene here and there in volumes, I really want to finish this, but I don't want to have nightmares every night if I'm like reading intense torture scenes. So yeah, if you've read the series, I actually would really appreciate if you would comment or like message me on Instagram or something. I love this cover. BT dubs. Then I got three volumes of Kimi ni Todoki. Four, five, and six. I've read one through three. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. When I read the first three volumes of this one, I read them all in like 24 hours, and two of them I read in one sitting. It's just that type of manga that I can fly through, and I've already watched the whole anime. I really enjoy this manga. I loved the anime. It was so cute. It's about this girl who like thinks she's cursed and is kind of bullied. It's just really about her social anxiety and her making friends and her being confident in herself and it's also the cutest love story. It's so sweet. I love it. I'm excited to read this one even though I've already seen all the anime. It's just fun to read it in the manga. So that's all the manga I bought. Also at Kinokuniya. I got some stickers. These Pusheen stickers. And then I got these like random animal stickers, rainbows and fish and elephants and stuff. They're very shiny, so it's kind of hard to see. I've been really into stickers recently. If you watched my favorites video a couple videos ago, 
I put stickers all over my Polaroid camera and that was from the same store. Those were also from Kinokuniya. So I thought I would pick up some more so I can sticker some other things. Then I got these little plastic folders. I don't know if this is like a Japanese thing. Like I don't know if I'm gonna use these correctly. I'm gonna use them for like keeping notes and receipts, just papers that I don't wanna lose. I always seem to have those laying around and then I don't know what to do with them. So they like pile up and make a mess everywhere. But I thought these were cute and I like the little Japanese characters. It's just a plastic folder and it's got a couple slots in there. I got a new journal. I kind of took the packaging off. I've showed one of these before in a video. I think it was my Kinokuniya haul back in June, which I'll link down below if you want to see that. I got a smaller version of this and I just love it so much. I love the way the paper feels. It's really nice quality. It is like sort of expensive, but journals are always expensive. I have these favorite pens that I really like to use and they often bleed through paper if it's not like nice quality paper, but it does not go through these. So favorite journal. I bought all of these pens. I did not buy all of these at the same place. Some of them I got at Kinokuniya, and some of them I got at the pen store, which is opened by the same people as the Rand McNally bookstore, which is the one where I bought Everyone's an Alien if you're an alien too. At Kinokuniya, I got two of these types of pens. It's a very thin tip. I like writing with them a lot. This is a bright orange ink, and this is just a black ink. Some cute colored highlighters. They're kind of like pastel highlighters. Those are adorable. I love them. I got this pen that comes, this is just the case, and then the other thing is the ink. So you buy this. I haven't tested this out yet, actually. So I think you kind of go like this and put it together. And then what, you just go like that. Somehow it goes in this thing. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> At the Rand McNally pen store, I got this tiny little pencil. It's a mechanical pencil, but it's literally the smallest pencil I've ever seen in my life. And the tip is so thin. I don't really like writing with pencils, but this one I think I'm gonna love. I got another one of my favorite pens that I mentioned earlier that tends to bleed through. And then I got an ink cartridge to refill one of my old ones with this a black jelly pen, this gray ink pen, because sometimes it's nice to write with something that's not black. And then I got this one, which is so pretty. The ink writes kind of lavender, blurple lavender colored. Yeah, I went a little pen crazy. It's like it is important because I'm a writer and I don't write on my computer. I write everything by hand the first time I write it. So pens are important. I forgot this. I got this at Kinokuniya. A little pushing. It was a blind box, one of the Halloween blind boxes, which are kind of my favorite. I want all of them. But I got the little ghost one, which is actually the one that I wanted. I now have this little guy and the candy corn one. I love it. He's so cute. The last things I'm going to haul for you guys. I went to this bookstore in Koreatown, which was like a bookstore slash music slash clothing slash beauty store <laughs> like it literally had everything obviously they had all the k-pop albums i got two versions of the love yourself her new bts album this album they split it into four parts so there's a letter for each part and it spells out love you can't really see but i got o and v I didn't mean to buy V. It's actually my least favorite of all the versions. I got it by accident because I was like really overwhelmed in the store. For those of you who are not K-pop people, the music is the same. Actually, there might be some hidden tracks on here. I kind of forget at the moment. But what's different is the concept photos. K-pop albums, when you buy them, it's not just like the CD. It comes with this whole book and then a bunch of extra stuff. There are some stickers. This, which is the notes, but it's all in Korean, so I don't know what it says. It comes with a member card. For the O version, I got Jimin, and for the V version, I got Jungkook. And then it comes with this book that is concept pictures of the members. This is the version that I meant to get. It's my favorite. I love 
the aesthetic of these pictures. I can't wait to take like Instagram pictures of this. This is one of my favorites of Namjoon. It's so pretty. And then it comes with the CD. I got two versions because the first time I went and bought the V version, which was not the one that I wanted. It was my least favorite, but it's okay because I'll probably end up owning all of them at some point anyways. You can see how different this aesthetic is to the last one that I showed. This is the V one, which I do like. It's just my least favorite because they look kind of whitewashed. Along with these came some free posters. I don't know if I'm gonna hang these on my wall. Like I'm not really a posters on your wall kind of person. It's a little creepy to me, but this one is really pretty. I'm not sure if I'm gonna hang it on my wall, but I do really like it. So that is everything I'm in a haul. Obviously I had a lot of fun in New York City. I got some really lovely things that are going to be super inspiring. I can't wait to read them slash listen slash use. I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope you guys are enjoying me making videos about not exclusively bookish things because I do think that's the direction that my channel is headed. I also wanted to say thank you guys so much for all of the really sweet comments about my hair. I do this type of thing for myself but it's always nice to see people's reactions and see that everyone enjoys it as well and you've all been the best on twitter and instagram i've just got so many comments that i literally couldn't reply to them all it means a lot to me that you guys are really supportive and just sweet and you know encouraging about little things like me dyeing my hair so thank you so much i'm so thankful for you all i hope you have a lovely day or night or afternoon wherever you are and i will see you in my next video